Welcome to CyberArray's video series on the CompDIA Security Plus 501 Certification and Exam. I'm your instructor, Ron Werner. Please visit CyberArray.it for more information on this certification and many others. This video is part of Domain 1, Threats, Attacks, and Vulnerabilities. In this video, I'll be talking about Section 1.3, Explain Threat Actor Types and Attributes. In this video, I'll cover the following topics. The different types of threat actors, such as script kiddies, hacktivists, nation states, insiders. I'll also talk about the attributes of threat actors, internal versus external, level of sophistication, resources, and intent. And I'll lastly talk about use of open source intelligence, basically news, to find out information about threats and conduct your own threat analysis. I'll start by explaining what is a threat or a threat actor. Well, the definition is a potential occurrence that can result in an undesirable outcome, or it's a person or thing likely to cause damage or danger. So a threat always has a negative connotation associated with it. A threat actor is a person or entity that is responsible for an event or incident that impacts or has potential to impact the safety or security of another entity. Keep these definitions in mind as we talk about types of threat actors. On your screen, you see different types of threat actors you may encounter in your role as a cybersecurity professional. The first is a script kitty, a derogatory term for people who use hacking techniques but have limited skills. Basically, they steal scripts off of the internet and they use them without really knowing how they work. Often such attackers may rely almost entirely on automated tools they download from the internet. So don't be a script kitty. The second is a hacktivist, a person or an entity who uses hacking techniques to accomplish some activist or political goal, usually seeking to deface websites. Lastly are insiders. These are internal employees seeking to cause damage to their organization. Other types of threat actors you may encounter include organized crime. These are organized groups seeking to steal money, identities, or corporate secrets. Conduct espionage, an organized crime syndicate. Competitors, they're outside organizations seeking to commit corporate espionage for financial or market gain. Nation states. And the news, as I'm recording this, is a lot about nation states attacking the United States. Their countries sponsoring illegal or fraudulent activities across the internet. An advanced persistent threat, or APT, is an attack in which unauthorized persons gain access to a network using advanced exploitation techniques and stays there for an undetected long period of time. The intention of an APT attack is to steal data rather than cause damage to the network or organization. I recommend you search the news for APT attacks. You'll find there are many stories you can learn from. A term associated with threats and threat actors are the deep web and dark web. Deep web is anything on the internet that a search engine can't find. At a normal search engine like Google, Bing or Yahoo can't find. The dark web is part of the deep web internet that is only accessible by special software, such as Tor, the onion router, allowing users and website operators to remain anonymous or untraceable. There is a dark web market, which is part of the dark web, often selling illegally gotten goods, merchandise, data, information, or services. So if I find a zero-day vulnerability, I might sell it on the dark web market. Credit card numbers that were stolen are also stolen on the dark web. You see an example on your screen. As part of your threat analysis, you should be using open source intelligence, also known as OSINT. Open source is any information that is readily available to anyone, newspapers, news sites. Intelligence is the collection of information of military, political, organizational, or financial value. Putting those two together is basically using 
open websites, open news sources to create your own intelligence. Websites and tools that allow you to gather information on current threats or specific security issues are shown on your screen. As part of this section in Security Plus, you need to also understand the attributes of threat actors. They could be internal employees versus external entities. It all depends on their level of access. A vendor could be someone who was external but brought in internally, so they can cross. The level of sophistication is that knowledge an entity has to cause the breach, to commit the fraud. There's also intent and motivation. Why are they conducting the fraud? Why are they the threat that they may be? Lastly are those resources or funding. Do they have the financial power to create the fraud, to commit the breach? You see on your screen my definition based on Cressy's fraud triangle, where it takes resources to commit fraud, you need three things, access, intent, and knowledge. Refer to this and think about how fraud could occur within your organization based on these attributes. In this video, I talked about different threat actor types and attributes. Let's practice on a sample question. Your company's website has been disfaced by an organization that doesn't agree with your corporate policies. What type of threat actor typically does this? The answer is B, a hacktivist. This is the definition of a hacktivist. This concludes the video for section 1.3, Explain Threat Actor Types and Attributes. Refer to your study material for more information.